In today's video, Linda and I are doing an upgrade to the camper we've wanted to do for quite some time. Yes, now our camper is a 2019 and it comes with a Dometic 300, which is all plastic. But about a year after we bought our camper, Rockwood upgraded to the Dometic 310, which is part porcelain. Oh, and you have a quick tip on how a trip to McDonald's is going to make things a little bit easier. So stick around. So right now we're going to show you just how easy it is to change this model out. And there's a filter on these commodes that um, if you're finding you have low water pressure, mm -hmm. you should look to clean these out. So we're going to show you how to do that as well. And lastly, we want to show you what the improvements are to the model we're installing today over the one that came originally with the camper. Now guys, this is just part of a broader picture. We're getting ready to go out west on a lengthy trip, and this is just one of the improvements we want to do before we leave. Right, so if you'd like to see those over the next few weeks, please remember to like and subscribe. And remember, Desi always wants you to hit that notification bell. Well, here it is, the Dometic 310. We looked around local and tried to find one, but didn't have any luck. We wanted to avoid any damage that may occur in shipping, but we went ahead and ordered it online anyway, and the box appears to be in good shape. It got delivered yesterday with no apparent damage. Everything appears to be in order. All the mounting hardware located right here for us to use, and I've already checked it out underneath this commode. That little rubber seal, it's already in position. The only thing left for us to do is get down there and install this unit. So we are here at the camper and about to get started. Now, because Troy is going to get an up close and personal relationship with our current toilet, uh, we went ahead and got prepared. Okay, so maybe a hazmat suit isn't required in this situation, but we did do a general cleaning of the area and we made sure that all water is off to the camper, including making sure that that water pump was off. Now, Troy's going to quickly show you what tools we're going to use on this, and then we're going to get started disconnecting the old. The following is what you need to get this project done. Nitrile gloves for just sanitary. A flat bar of some kind to pry these little plastic caps um, off on both sides of the commode where the nuts hold down the commode to the flange. You're going to need a small pair of channel locks to disconnect the water supply and to reconnect the water supply on the rear of the commode. Lastly, 7 16 end wrench or 11 millimeter. Um, both of them will do the job. They're identical virtually. And um, this is what you need to take those nuts off the posts when you, when you go to lift the commode off. Always keep a bunch of rags around. You're likely to have, even if you drop the water out of the lines, even if you turn the water off, which you need to do, you're likely to have a little bit of back water in that line that's going to come out when you disconnect. Don't be alarmed. Just have some rags ready to clean it up. So to start, go ahead and lay a towel down behind the commode where the water supply is. Then I'm going to recommend you take the plastic caps loose, take the end wrench, and slack those nuts up a little bit on both sides before you disconnect the water. You're going to have a little water coming through, and this way it'll diminish the length of time that you're disconnecting and reconnecting and you're having any dripping water. All right, the next step, you've got to disconnect the water line from the back of the commode. You may be able to do it with just your fingers and hands, but if it is a little tighter than you expect, use channel lock pliers and gently uh, take the pressure off those threads and disconnect it. You want to have a small container, and I mean small because there's not a lot of room, and some rags handy to catch any water that does come out at that point. All right, so you've already loosened those nuts on the right and left side of the commode. Go ahead and take those nuts off, and with the water line disconnected from the rear of the commode, you should be able to lift this unit right off the post. It'll be very light. should be nothing to it. In my experience with RVs, one of the most clutch moves you can make is before you go to start this project, swing by a fast food franchise and get a drink. The diameter of those drink cups just happens to be the correct size 
to plug the hole that goes into the black tank when you're pulling a commode off an RV. And it actually works in a sticks and bricks homes just as well. We've done it in our previous camper, our current camper, and it just helps to keep that gas smell back Let's say, for instance, if you're replacing the flooring in the bathroom or you're just replacing the commode like we are here today, it's a great move. Make your project a lot more user friendly. So setting the new commode is by far the most challenging part of this project and not because it's incredibly complex, but it is kind of challenging because you can't see the posts that are sticking up from the flange when you set the commode down because the wall is right next to our commode on one side and the shower is right next to the commode on the right side. So we had to do it by feel. The, you have to have them just right for them to fit over. It took us both and it took us about 10 minutes and many tries to actually do it, but it wasn't insurmountable. But it was a little bit more than I thought it was gonna be just cause you have to do it by feel alone. So you are successful. You've got the commode sitting down and the, the threads are sticking up through the two little holes on the right and left side. Now take those two little nuts, run them down on the posts as best you can with your fingers. When you get them close, grab that 7 16 end wrench, snug up those bolts. At this point, folks, do not over tighten these nuts. You could damage the commode. Then simply grab those plastic caps, pop them on top of the posts. They'll snug into position and you're in a good spot. So with the commode sitting down on the posts, the next step, reconnect the water line on the back of the commode. You don't want to see that drip any longer than you have to. It just makes for a better job. So to go ahead and take that connection, thread it onto that threaded nipple on the back of the commode, get it finger tight, take your channel locks, give it a little bit of snugging, do not over tighten it, and then you can move on to the next step. Now that it's complete, go ahead and turn the water back on and check for leaks. The easiest way I have found to do this is to lay some paper towels at the back of the commode. All told, this project took us a little bit less than 30 minutes. The unit's installed. We have a new commode. What do we think? Well, I think Linda and I are in agreement. This was a great addition to our camper. Right off the bat, it's just much more comfortable to sit on. The fact that it doesn't have that cheesy plastic slamming lid, but in fact now has a slow close lid, we like that a lot. I like the fact that it has water jets all the way around the top ring of the bowl. I think that's just altogether a better setup. Has a couple things to consider though. It is 30 pounds heavier. That's 30 pounds we didn't have originally and we're gonna lose now. We need to think about that when we're thinking about towing. Also, it's probably going to use a little bit more water than the one we had before you know so that's something for us to consider especially as we're moving into boondocking more and more but neither one of those things I think would have been so significant that it would have made us think about not doing this upgrade this is definitely a positive and I think we're both glad we did it now this is the old one fully cleaned in an earlier video, we talked about maintaining your water system and we mentioned you may need to clean the filter if you have low water pressure. At the time, it was difficult to show the location of this filter because it was installed, but just know that it's right here. Now, luckily, Linda and I haven't had any issues, but if you find yourself with low pressure coming out of the commode, you may want to disconnect the water line and generally clean out the area to see if this resolves the issue. So that wraps up today's video. Please let us know if you have any questions in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.